Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about Ram trucks and the fact that, well, they're still struggling to sell. We just got the reports for the quarter one sales of Ram trucks, and they're in the red. And the thing that's crazy is they're in the red at the same time that GM and Ford, which is Ram's biggest competitors in the truck world, are in the green. So those two manufacturers are selling more trucks, whereas Ram is selling fewer trucks. Before we get into this video, I do want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Larch Miller Dodge Ram here in Provo. Now, they do not endorse or approve of this video whatsoever. I am filming this video on their lot, so I will give them a shout out and I will include a link to their inventory in the description down below as well so you can check them out and check out what they have currently. And then as always, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. So let's start things off by diving into these statistics. So Ram is currently in a position where they have seen their sales volume year over year decline by over 6%. And at that same time, Ford and General Motors have seen their volume increase. And here are the numbers. So Chevrolet year over year has seen their volume increase by almost 16%. Ford has seen their volume increase by almost 12%. And then GMC has seen their volume increase by almost 8%. And like I said, Ram is almost 7% with their volume decline. They sold 128,000 units last, or sorry, this year. And then last year they sold 138,000 units in quarter one. So what that means is we've seen a year over year decline in volume of about 10,000 units in just a single quarter. Now I just made a video talking about Jeep's sales decline. And in that video, I talked about how the parent company of Jeep Stellantis has seen a sales decline across all of their brands. And well, Ram happens to be one of those brands. So Stellantis as a company has currently experiencing a sales decline of about 10%, which isn't an insane amount, but like I said at the beginning of the video, you have the competition which is seeing their sales volume increase. And so obviously if your competitors are selling more cars and you're selling fewer cars, then that's an issue. So let's take a quick look at some of the trucks and try to figure out exactly what's happening. Let's start with the half tons, which there aren't that many half tons available right now. It's actually kind of hard to find <laughs> half tons right now. Um, but this one right here is a limited. This is actually a 2022 model year. So this is before they did the new gauge cluster. Um, so this one doesn't have the digital. But anyways, base MSRP is 66,000. Uh, MSRP in this one is 71,000 after all options. The biggest uh, option is actually the destination charge, which is almost $2,000 of destination charge. That's pretty crazy. Crazy. Ram charges their customers $2,000 to ship this truck from the plant over here to the dealership. And this limited is actually pretty common. The reason I say pretty common, I've noticed that Ram has been shipping out a bunch of these limiteds that are basically what I'd call base model limiteds. Now, a bunch of what you will see is heavy duty trucks, and this has been a pretty uh, recent trend with Ram because HD trucks used to be sold out and frankly with Chevy and with Ford they're really hard to come by whereas with Ram you can find a ton of them well you can find a ton of a very specific type of heavy duty truck and that is the Ram 2500 uh, so first off we'll actually pop in the other and we'll look at the window sticker here so this is a big horn $73,000. At least it has at least it has a uh, diesel, but $73,000 for this truck. And well, the big horn package with the 2500 happens to have multi-link in the back end. And well, all of these trucks that you see except maybe like one or two are also 2500s with the multi-link in the back end. And that multi-link suspension is a big problem for the heavy duty trucks that we'll talk about in just a moment. Now what you won't see here, and by the way, that's a used cargo van, that's not a new one, is new Ram Promasters because those are actually sold out. So Ram is struggling to sell some of these trucks, especially these 2500 series HD trucks, and they're not really struggling to sell the 3500 series trucks as much, or the ProMaster cargo vans. Now, before I get into my big argument as to why Ram trucks are not selling, I quickly want to make one more point, and that is about Ram's reliability. So in my video talking about why Jeep isn't selling, I talked about how Jeep has a poor reliability score and how that poor reliability score is surely affecting sales. Well, that's not the case with Ram when you compare it to the competition. So this comes from Consumer Reports. Ram is the 16th most reliable brand. So they're not the most reliable brand, but they're not the least reliable. The least reliable at 24th place is Mercedes-Benz and Jeep is second last at 23. It's not a great place to be. But Ford is number 18. 
Tesla is number 19. The reason I want to mention Tesla is everyone hates on Tesla for reliability. So Ford is slightly more reliable than Tesla, but apparently Chevrolet and GMC are less reliable than Ram and Ford and Tesla. And so Ram is actually technically the most reliable truck maker out of the big three. But again, they're having the biggest decline in sales volume. Well, say goodbye to these Ram trucks because I am heading off in my super reliable Volvo. I've been sitting out here for like an hour, and so I feel like I deserve to cap off this video inside of the nice warm cabin of the Volvo. So let's start things off with the Ram Promaster, which is a Ram vehicle that actually is selling very well. So the reason that Promaster is selling very well is because the cargo van market right now is actually very tight. Uh, commercial sales, fleet sales more specifically, are up by a substantial margin this year. And while cargo vans generally go to fleets, and so it makes sense as to why Ram's cargo van is not struggling to sell whatsoever because it's a fleet type vehicle and the cargo van world like if there's a cargo van brand new that's available like it's sold like it doesn't matter what it is companies will buy them and so now let's dive into the pickup trucks let's start with the Ram 3500 right that's their not quite their top of the line HD truck because they also sell a 4500 and a 5500 as well but let's just let's just uh talk about the 3500 because generally 4500s and 5500s get sold again in fleets right those are generally commercial vehicles now the 3500 series truck is actually not struggling to sell right now um, there will be some available on dealer lots but it's usually because they just have the wrong options like what i've seen quite often is that a dealer will order a ram 3500 like tradesman with high output cummins and it's not a dually and it's like that's just not a truck that someone like there will be some people that'll want that truck but like most people if they're going to get the high output cummins in a 3500 they want the dually because that's like a work truck whereas if they're going to get the high output in a single rear wheel truck then they're going to want that to happen in a loaded up truck right it's going to be their you know luxury daily driver that they'll occasionally tow with and they want the high output because it's well the high output now the reason why the 3500 series truck sells so well is because it still utilizes leaf springs and so a ram 3500 still has a really solid payload capacity if you get a 3500 dually you have a payload capacity of over 5,000 pounds right that's solid if you get like a regular single rear wheel 3500 loaded up like let's say a laramie or something like that most of the time you'll still have a payload capacity of over 4,000 pounds or around 4,000 pounds. And so this is a great heavy duty truck that's great at doing heavy duty truck stuff, hauling and towing. The regular Cummins can tow like 16,000 plus pounds. The high output in a single rear wheel can tow like 20,000 pounds. And then if you had a dually, you can tow over 30,000 pounds. So the 3500 is a very capable truck and that's why that truck's actually selling well. Now on the other hand, you have the 2500 series truck, which most of those trucks that were for sale were 2500 series trucks and that is the truck that's struggling to sell and it's because of the suspension so it has multi-link in the back end which the multi-link is great for ride quality it's not great for towing and hauling most 2500s that you'll see on dealer lots have a payload capacity of less than 2,000 pounds for an hd truck just to put that number into reference i review trucks on a regular basis and i've reviewed several half ton trucks that have a higher payload capacity than what ram hds have the 2500s and i've even reviewed mid-sized trucks that are coming close to what the ram has when it comes to payload capacity and so that multi-link although helps out with ride quality diminishes the capacity of that truck by a massive amount you basically have to make the choice of either hauling or towing with the truck because with the 2500 let's say cummins if you have a payload capacity of 1700 pounds which is quite common and you want to tow the max tow rating which is around 16,000 pounds that leaves you with about what 100 pounds of payload left which means that if you weigh more than 100 pounds and you're sitting in the truck then you're already maxing out the payload so you can't put anything in the bed and so you guys can see the practicality of the truck for truck stuff is just so low and so it makes sense as to why the truck's not selling and then on top of that you can only get the Ram 2500 with the standard output Cummins. Whereas the other automakers, Ford and General Motors, they offer their HD trucks with pretty crazy powertrains. So with a 2500 Silverado, you get the full on Duramax, right? You get all almost a thousand pound feet of torque and it's like 470 horsepower. And then with the Ford Super Duty, you get 475 horsepower and 1050 pound feet of torque if you get the power stroke in an F250. Now, the high output Cummins would not make sense in a Ram 2500 because that setup weighs so much that 2500 would have even less payload. But 
if Ram went back to using leaf springs in the 2500, then the payload thing wouldn't be a problem. They'd be able to put the high output in the 2500, and the 2500 would be more practical for truck stuff, and it would have a cool powertrain that you know people that just want crazy powertrains would love and would use. And so the 2500 is really like what I'd call the, the crux of the Ram, the Ram HD truck sales. It is definitely causing a lot of issues for Ram HD trucks. So this leads us to the 1500 series of trucks. Now the Ram 1500s aren't selling for a few reasons. The first reason is a lot of the meaningful changes that Ram has made to the truck over the course of its existence as a fifth gen haven't been standard, right? So like, look at the rear view camera mirror, for example. Look at some of the packages they've added, like the night edition, for example, the new digital gauge cluster. You either have to get top of the line trucks or you have to pay extra money to get these new features. And so most of the Ram trucks you'll see in dealer lots look identical to what they looked like back in 2019, right? And so the truck just kind of feels old at this point. And the reason why it kind of feels old is Ford has a new F-150 that released for the 21 model year. And General Motors has the new Sierra and the new Silverado, right? They released for the 22 model year. Toyota has a new Tundra. Nissan released a new Titan for the 22 model year. And so Ram actually has the oldest pickup truck on the pickup truck market. And so that's part of it. Ram, you know, needs to do some updates that are actually like across the board, right? With all of the trucks so that everyone feels like they're getting a new Ram because there's no reason for someone to trade in their 2019 Ram 1500, frankly. And the other reason why there hasn't been a reason for them to trade it in is because of powertrains. Ram has offered the same powertrain options on their truck for so long. The 5.7 Hemi is a great engine, but it's so old at this point. And I mean, look at Ford that is increasing in sales. They offer a naturally aspirated V6, a base turbocharged V6, an upgraded turbocharged V6, a naturally aspirated 5.0 V8. They offer a hybrid twin turbo V6. General Motors offers a diesel, a turbocharged four cylinder, a lower output V8 that's smaller, right? The 5.3, and then they offer the 6.2 V8. And so Ram offering two engine options now because they got rid of the eco diesel, a naturally aspirated V6 and a 5.7 Hemi. It's just not enough to appeal to truck, appease truck buyers rather appeal, appease truck buyers. They want more engine options with half tons. So Ram obviously has the Hurricane engine that will be coming out sometime in the future, but like it can't come soon enough. They need to have more engine options so they're more competitive with General Motors and with Ford as well. And then on top of that, again, the same problem that applies to the 2500 series trucks applies to the Ram 1500s with the payload capacity. And even though know, the towing capacity not as much, but definitely the payload. Ram uses multi-link in the 1500, which I love for ride quality. It's not great for payload. I mean, a Ram 1500 Limited has like 1,000, 1,100 pounds of payload, right? And the towing capacity with a Ram 1500 Limited with a 5.7 Hemi is like 11,000 pounds. So again, you have to make the choice between towing or hauling. You can't do both at the same time, right? If you're, if you're maxing out the truck. And so Ram needs to either go back to leaf springs, which I think a lot of people would be upset at that, or improve the multi-link setup so that it can handle a higher payload capacity. And this leads me to the final point as to why Ram is seeing huge declines in sales, and that is the price point that their trucks are at. Their trucks are too dang expensive, especially for the features that they offer. Ram has gotten rid of standard equipment consistently, and they've increased the price. So basically, if you buy a Ram truck today, you have to pay more for your truck, and you get less options. And when you compare it to the competition, it gets even worse. You can get a fully loaded Silverado High Country, a very nice luxury truck, for like seventy-two to seventy-five thousand dollars, depending on how many options you add to it, a Ram fifteen hundred limited, fully loaded, that would be similar to that truck, you're paying over eighty thousand dollars. A Ford F one hundred and fifty limited is similar in price to a Ram, but it actually offers more options. Typically, you get like massaging seats, for example. The Ram doesn't offer massaging seats, uh, and then the GMC Denali Ultimate, you also get stuff like massaging seats, and that truck feels newer because it was just released for the 22 model year. And so what Ram has done is they basically made it so their truck is the most expensive or at the high end of price point with a pickup truck, but it doesn't offer anything more than the other automakers offer. And frankly, in a lot of cases, it offers less. And so Ram has completely switched their value proposition. When I sold fifth gen Rams when they first came out, it was super easy to sell them because it was like, hey, this costs $10,000 less than the Ford and you get more options and it's a better looking truck and it has a nicer interior. Whereas now it's like, oh, it's as expensive as the Ford. It has less options. And well, Ford's improved their interior. And so the interior on the Ram is about the same as the Ford. It's like, do you want to buy the Ford or the Ram? And they're like, 
I'm gonna go buy the Ford because I can get an engine, a different engine option that I want, right? So in summary, Ram has seen their sales decline because their trucks are way more expensive than what they were prior. And to show that their trucks are too expensive, I just got an email from Ram today saying, hey Ben, come buy a truck. We'll give you 10% under MSRP. If you are part of Ram's email mailing list, then you will have gotten the same email as me. The only reason why Ram is having to discount their trucks, whereas the other automakers aren't having to discount their trucks, is because they're too expensive. <laughs> like that just, that just hits home with the point. The price point's too high. The capability is not there anymore. The Ram trucks were super capable compared to the other trucks back in 2019 when they were released. But now with how modern technology has improved with payload capacities and towing capacities and all that, Ram needs to improve the capacity of their trucks, especially the 1500 and the 2500 to keep up with Ford and to keep up with General Motors. So if they improve the capabilities of the truck, they make it so the price point is more reasonable especially for the features that they're offering, they will sell more trucks. If they continue to offer less features, less capability at a higher price, they're gonna to continue to see their sales decline at the same time that Ford and General Motors will see their sales increase. Let me know what you think about the Ram truck situation. Let me know what you'd like to see from Ram. I'll see ya.